My dear viewer, welcome again to our series of 40 Days of Prayer. This is day 17th, and we are glad the Lord has been so gracious and so faithful. I want to invite you one more time as we have a moment with the Lord, that this morning or this afternoon, wherever you are, it could be evening, we may be blessed of the Lord. On this day 17th of our 40 Days of Prayer, we are looking at the church to preach, the church to preach. Before we get to the guiding text, of course, which is the book of Second Timothy, let's say a brief prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, thank you for the privilege of this ministry. We thank you for how you're reaching out to many people. We thank you for your many interventions in our life, Lord. And this moment, I pray that as I speak, may I not speak, but may you speak through me to, you, to your people, that we shall hear you, see you, know you, and surrender to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. For today's of prayer, day 17th, the church to preach the word. Text is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 1 down to verse number 4. I'll read quickly. I charge thee, therefore, this is Paul and Timothy. Paul is talking to Timothy, a young preacher, uh, as he is being inaugurated into the ministry and charges him. So verse number 1, I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his, and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Verse number three. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own last shall they heap to themselves, teach us having itching ears. In verse number four, and they shall turn away the ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Now Paul, an old minister, training young minister Timothy, it comes to a time when he is now um, ordaining him, inaugurating him for the ministry, and he charges him to go out in the power of the Spirit to preach. And he says, preach in season and out of season. He tells him, be instant, be ready, be quick, be available at all times in season and out of season. Remember, we began the word series where we've been looking at various aspects of the word. Yesterday we were looking at the word as the, the, the light. Use the text of Psalms 119. And, and we are glad that today we are talking about the ministry of the word through the servants of God. And, and Paul is charging Timothy to preach in season and out of season. And you see, this particular text here is very critical for one or two reasons. Number one, you see, he says, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with the word of God. That the word of God, the preached message, the preached gospel, the spoken word of God, what I'm doing here has power, has ability to Reprove somebody. You know, the word of God, anytime it comes to our lives, it, it ministers to us in our own situations. So, 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 so for, some, for, for some, it will be a reproof. For, for some, it will be a rebuke. For some, it will be an encouragement. For some, it will be a warning. For, for some, it will be a blessing. For some, it will be a thanksgiving and praising the Lord for that particular message. For some, it will be exhorting. You, you see, whatever it is, whenever the word of God comes out of the mouth of the preacher, it lands in the hearts of people differently accomplishing divine purposes. Is it not God who said his word will never come out of his mouth or the mouth of his servant, go out and come back in vain? True. And so the power of the word of God is something that we have to acknowledge that many people are in church because this word reached out to them through a man or a woman. You know, those of us who preach the gospel, it doesn't mean that we are perfect. 
doesn't mean that we are better than other people. But one thing I know, God has accepted us to be instrument in his hands. You know, instrument, uh, we don't have to be perfect. But if the owner is using them, it's okay for him. And we can see even in the scriptures, various men and women who are very weak by human standards, yet God calls them his servants. Uh, he calls them uh, like David, man after own, God, God's own heart. And when, but when you look deep into the hearts and into, I mean, into the life of David, you see many challenges, many doubting aspects of his life. But, but God says, this is my man, I'm using him. Now, God is able to use anyone, anything to accomplish his purposes. And I want to encourage you, my dear viewer, wherever you are in a Christian life, whenever you hear the word of God spoken, it may not be spoken by the person you expected. It may not be spoken by the person you think is the right one to speak about it. But the word of God, it doesn't matter from whose mouth it comes from. This word has a way of getting into your heart and transforming you. I'm not saying let's preachers be careless. Let's, let's preachers live anyhow, anyway, because they're preaching the one has power to influence people. No, because the container of the message is as important as the content. But I'm saying this, that there is power in the word of God. And it doesn't matter who speaks that word of God. If you have a receptive heart, that word of God will come into your life. It's going to transform you. It is going to revive you. It is going to strengthen you. It is going to renew you. It is going to equip you. It is going to prepare you for eternity. So when it comes to your life, it may come with rebukes. I remember there's a time I preached somewhere. <clears throat> and I have shared this story elsewhere. And um, one man said that in church, one of the actually, uh, leaders of the church, uh, a student said, Pastor, how, how, how can you come here to preach me? Uh, you, 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 just, you, you came here and somebody just told you about me and you're just preaching me from the pulpit? And he was so mad with me. I mean, he was stopping you from preaching. And, I, I, and honestly, I didn't know anything. I just, we were just preaching. But you see, this particular message was addressing a situation in a way he thought that somebody had told me about his life. At times you can find yourself in that situation, but you don't have to stone the messenger. You need to receive the message and allow the message to transform you because that is how God intended to reach out to you. Now, as we pray today, because we are just here to pray, how he is the word of God working in your life. Are there moments that you feel the word of God is pricking you? Are there times you feel uncomfortable listening to a particular message? It is good for the message to make you uncomfortable. It is good for the message to make you uncomfortable because it is by so doing you become comfortable with the Lord. You know, the fact that the message is making you un feel uncomfortable, it means you're not comfortable with God's will. And so it is bringing you and aligning you to the will of God. So allow it to do its work. You see, when you visit a surgeon, when you visit a physician, when you're sick, and the, the, the doctor will have to, to do its work. And at times, you know, getting into where the problem is comes with some pain, comes with some uh, discomfort. But, but it is a good process that... For, for, you, for your healing, for your restoration. And so let's allow the word of God, whether it is rebuking or whether it is provoking or whatever it is doing in our lives, let's allow it to do its divine purposes that we may be transformed, we may be equipped, and we may have no reason to be ashamed. You see, Paul tells Timothy, preach the word, be in season, be, be instant in season, out of season, provoke, rebuke, Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So, my dear viewer, I pray that this moment, this morning, or this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are, you may allow the word of God to work its purposes in your life, to prevail against your weak, weaknesses, and, 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 and to bring out the, the washing or way of sin and, and tendencies that so easily ensnares you into the world, that, that you can be prepared to be a, a man or a woman um, we, 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 without a spot or, or, or wrinkle, being presented before the Lord through 
the ministry of the word. As we pray today, are there certain ways in your life you feel you need to surrender? Are there certain ways in your life you have felt the word of God is addressing but you have been dismissing it? I want to pray this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are, you may commit such points in your life to the Lord even now that the word of God may minister to you for the purposes of attaining salvation. There are many other prayer requests that you can pray for or we have to pray for today. Remember, you have the seven-member list, but allow me just to read one or two here that we may join together with the World Church as we are praying, that we are being asked to pray for boldness, to preach the word. Imagine that. You know, some, some preachers are not bold. They fear. And I've seen at times they preach, and, and, and people wonder. And, 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 and at times also I prepare to preach. I'm asking myself, what would the people say about this message? Uh, they, they, but, but there are times that we have to speak the truth as it is. There are times we have to come also boldly and speak the, and preach the truth. So we are praying for boldness in, to preach the word in words and actions today. Pray for more young people to be called to preach the word. The church it will, 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 is, 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 is begun with the young people. And it's the young people to, to, to finish the work of God. You know, even when you go through the Bible, you see young, dynamic men who did a lot of things for the Lord. All these people who read the Bible, they all became who they are when they were young. Jeremiah, a young preacher. Timothy, now we are talking about Timothy, a young preacher. Paul also was young when he got to the ministry. Many people were young. I mean, and we are praying for young people out here to come out and preach the gospel because we have the strength and the commitment to do that. Pray about any questions you have in the Bible. That's going to help you find answers and clarity regarding those questions. We also pray for your local pastors. So wherever you are, if you're getting them, message, pray for me, Pastor Peter Nyaga. Pray for me. I need your prayer. Pray for Pastor Ogeda. Pray for Pastor Titirop. Pray for pastors around you. That you know, pray for ministers, men and women of God who are laboring day and night. Let me tell you, you have no idea what we go through as pastors. At times you see us on pulpit, we're putting a bold face. But we bring through a lot, right from our homes, from our workplaces. A lot of things happening to us. Pray for us that despite all that is coming into a way, we may remain focused in the ministry. So pray for your local pastors. Pray that God would sustain them, protect them, and most importantly, fill them with an even more abundant outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Pray for protection of our young people from the ever-increasing addictions to technology and screen time. And pray, of course, for the seven-member list that you already have. And if you're joining for the first time, we said just get seven people that will be praying for through the 40 days of prayer. So these and those that you have there and many, God shall continue prompting you to pray for. This is the reason we are here. Let's pray together. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for this precious moment of prayer in this season of 40 days of prayer. And we thank you today for the challenge that Paul gives Timothy as a, a young preacher and charges him to preach in season and out of season and to provoke, to rebuke, uh, and even to exhort in righteousness using doctrine and using the word of God and humility and the spirit of God that people may be prepared because we are living in the very last days and we have no time to waste. We have no time to, to, to waste here on earth but to do exactly what the times demands. At times we have to speak very strict truths that may be cutting and make people uncomfortable. Lord, we are praying that we may give us boldness to speak even so because we know we are living at, 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 in, in, at the last day and, and we know that it's not even popular to stand for the truth. At a time when almost every landmark of righteousness being broken right, left, center, it takes boldness of ministers today to come out and speak as it is in the scripture. Lord, we are praying for special touch of the Holy Spirit upon all ministers. The Lord, you shall use us in this age to accomplish the purpose you so intended for the church. We want to thank you, Lord, and pray for young people out here in the world that they can come out, identify with the gospel, become preachers as young as they are. You need us, Lord, and I pray that 
you, you, will, you will speak and move young people. And if even in this message, uh, this hour, Lord, there's a young person listening to this message, Lord. I'm praying for them that you may move them and touch them and, and let them know you're waiting for them to come, to join us, that we may be a big team that is spreading the hope of the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We continue praying, Lord, even for the seven members that we have put up in our list to pray for. Lord, may you intervene in the situations of their life. And if there is anyone struggling, Lord, we are praying through the ministry of the word. May you revive them. May you, may, may, may you give them victories. May you give them hope. May you give them new energies. May, may you re renew their thoughts and their minds. But above all, Lord, I pray that you may, you may change their hearts. You, you, may, you may create in them new hearts that they will be receptive of your, of your word and they can be transformed. Thank you, Lord, for the many miracles you're performing. And thank you for the testimonies I'm receiving from people who are watching this program. And I pray that, Lord, as we journey through the 40 days, indeed, we will have testimonies to give. Bless us with your presence continually. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, dear viewer. Thank you really for staying tuned waiting upon this program. I have seen many of you are following every day. The Lord bless you. If you're joining for the first time or if you have not, you know, subscribe to our channel. I'm just requesting you once again, click that button there, that red button there. Click, subscribe. It's free. No, no charges. The advantage is whenever we have such programs, you'll be getting notified without your notice. So just subscribe. But I also want to request you to share with as many people, many friends, within your contacts as you can, that this message Reach out to many. Till tomorrow, may the Lord bless you.